a lot of the time in computing, what we're trying to achieve is to be able to do more things or do things faster. And of course, we're trying to find all sorts of different ways for us to achieve that. One method that has been in use and has been getting more and more popular these days is to actually accelerate doing tasks using the GPU of a computer. We often hear many interesting things about using a GPU to do some form of processing. So of course, the question is why and how? Why is it that a GPU can do things faster? Why is it that we don't use it all the time for general purpose computation? And yeah, just how is it done? We'll cover all this and more in today's Random Wednesday episode. Hello and welcome back to another Random Wednesday episode. Now, before we begin, I'd like to give credit where credit is due. In fact, much of this episode comes from a particular module I took in school. So I'd like to thank the professor, Dr. Lo Kok Lim from the National University of Singapore for creating a pretty cool and interesting lesson. In fact, much of it will be translated into today's episode. So we have a lot to thank him for. Here's how this video is going to be organized in order to understand how we can actually use a GPU that is the graphics processing unit of your computer to speed up general purpose computation, we first need to understand how it does its actual job, and that is to actually render out graphics. Once we understand that, we can move on to take a look at some basic ways of harnessing its power to do general purpose computation. Once we're done with that, we can move on to wrap up the episode, We'll talk a little bit about what are some of the more modern improvements to doing general purpose computation on a GPU, and we'll also take a look at why it's not used all the time. So yeah, that's going to be the rough flow of things. Without further ado, let us jump into the first part. So first of all, what is the purpose of a GPU? You see, when it comes to rendering 3D graphics, there is actually quite a lot of work to do. It's not particularly hard work, but there's a lot of it. Here's what I mean. Now, when you want to draw a 3D object on screen, what you pass to your computer are actually a bunch of vertices. These vertices basically come together to form a mesh, and this mesh is a representation of your 3D object. The positions of all the vertices are given in what is known as the world space. That is, there is some origin somewhere, and all the vertices will have an X, Y, and Z coordinate relative to that origin. The task of your computer when it comes to rendering out this 3D object is to convert all these coordinates to the coordinates that will actually appear on your screen. Then it needs to fill in all the pixels that exist between these mapped vertices. Of course, one of the things that really sells the 3D effect is lighting and shading. This is what we call lighting computation and is something that needs to be done as well to create your final 3D rendered image. The trivial way to achieve this effect is to of course simply loop through all the pixels and manually perform all the computation you need to perform. That of course takes a long time because there are many pixels, especially on today's high resolution screens. So instead, a better solution needs to be found and that exists in our graphics cards of today. The reason why a GPU is often used in real-time graphics rendering is because it's able to do a lot at once in parallel. So yeah, that's basically how graphics works on a GPU and why a GPU can actually render your graphics very quickly. But here's the deal. One of the more recent developments in graphics cards terms is the ability for you to program certain stages of computation that is actually performed on your graphics card. I say it's recent, but it's not that recent, it's relatively recent, but at any rate, you're able to change up how your graphic card performs certain actions, you know, some of them are what we've discussed earlier, and in doing so, we can make it, well, draw nicer images, or we can use it for a completely different purpose, and that is general purpose computation. These programmable stages on your graphics card are known as shaders. Now, graphics packages like OpenGL actually provide quite a few different types of shaders. We'll focus on two of them, a vertex shader and a fragment shader. 
Without going into too much detail, the former is what converts coordinates from world space to screen space, and is invoked once per vertex. Once we know where every vertex lies on screen, we know the areas they fill as well. From there, fragment shaders are invoked to fill up these areas, one invocation per pixel. As you can imagine, this is where things get interesting because, well, there are many pixels on screen and that means there are many parallel fragment shader invocations. That is precisely what makes graphics rendering very fast and that is precisely what we're going to take advantage of if we want to do general purpose computation. But how? How do we actually use our GPU for general purpose computation? Well, as it turns out, it's not too difficult of an idea. All we have to do is to take our input data, that is the data we want to process, and somehow turn it into an image. Then we push this image through the rendering pipeline. Instead of allowing it to be rendered normally like an image, we use some specialized shader to process that image. At the end of the day, the result we get from the render pass is another image, which we can then read off back into the format we want, say numerical data. And that's how we've just tricked our GPU into doing general purpose computation. You can do some really cool things using this technique. Let's take a look at one, taking the sum of a very large array. Of course, for the purposes of this demonstration, we're just going to stick to a relatively small one. But you can imagine how this scales. What you're seeing here on screen is a bunch of data that has been converted into an image. This actually becomes an image rescaling problem. Basically, every single pass of the algorithm takes in an input and generates an output that is half the size. Every pixel in the output is derived from a summation of 4 pixels in the input. If we run this algorithm again and again multiple times, eventually we will reduce the entire image down to a single pixel. In doing so, we've essentially summed up every single square and collected it into one position. Once we read off that value, that is our cumulative sum. Because all these individual summations are done in parallel and they don't affect each other, we can finish this computation much faster than we can looping through everything one by one. So yeah, that is how you do general purpose computation on GPU. But here's the deal, what I've just discussed is actually the old school method. What is preferred and probably more useful today is to write code that can directly run on your GPU. That is instead of having to you know, think about how we can convert our problem to an imaging problem, well, just write code that directly executes. There are advantages and disadvantages to doing this compared to using the shaders method we've just seen. If we were to use shaders, we can run this on basically any GPU these days. However, if we want to use a driver that allows us to directly run code on a GPU, there is an issue of support. We have to make sure that our user has the correct driver installed and they have the appropriate hardware to support the operations we want to do. Currently, two popular drivers exist to do this. One of them is called OpenCL, which stands for the Open Computing Language. You know, it's created by Kronos Group, the same guys who wrote OpenGL. OpenCL is free and open source and is designed to run on basically any modern hardware. And what that means is basically any GPU that is about five years old. An alternative to this would be CUDA, that stands for Compute Unified Device Architecture and it is a proprietary driver released by NVIDIA for use on NVIDIA cards. What's interesting about these techniques is because they interact with the card at a lower level, they may allow you to do some things that normal rendering doesn't actually do. For example, a fragment shader is only allowed to write to the fragment that it's been assigned to. It cannot write this data anywhere on the memory of your GPU. When it comes to using something like CUDA, you don't have this sort of limitation. You can write to anywhere you want, and that could make certain operations much simpler. One example of this is searching. Now, when we normally search through an array, what we have to do is we have to loop through every element in the array until we find what we want to look for. Of course, if it's sorted, you can do binary search, but 
that's another story. Anyway, when it comes to doing a search on a GPU, well, things can be very simple, especially if all the threads are allowed to write wherever they like in memory. Here's how we do it. Basically, we dispatch one thread for every item in the array. The logic for each thread is as follows. If the item that you are supposed to look at isn't correct, do nothing. If it is correct, write its position to a shared location in memory. Do you know what this means? What this means is you can essentially search an array in an instant. And there you have it, that is computation on GPU. Now, I guess we should wrap up by answering one pretty important question, and that is, why don't we just use the GPU all the time? Well, the truth is, the cores on a GPU, while many, are not really optimized to perform a large string of tasks at a time. Your CPU is better at that. Your CPU can do very complex operations, it even does certain operations out of order because it knows doing that will be faster. Another possible bottleneck for a GPU is of course bandwidth, and that is you still have to transmit all your data to a GPU, let it do its processing, and then read it back. So yeah, what this means of course is that both these components have their parts to play, neither one of them will subsume the other anytime in the near future. So yeah, hopefully that answers the question of why don't we just use our GPUs all the time. Anyway, that's about all there is for this video, it has run a little bit too long, so let's wrap it up here. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you learned something new and different about the GPU in your computer. Until next time, you're watching 0612 TV. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked this video, consider checking out the rest of my work on my channel. Alternatively, you may be interested in a playlist of my earlier work on computing and computer science topics. If you'd like to show me some monetary support, I am on Patreon. You can find a link to my campaign in the video description. Of course, you can simply like this video or leave a comment. I'll be sure to respond as soon as I can. To keep in touch with my future uploads, do subscribe to this channel. And for even more updates, check out the official Twitter account for this channel at 0612TV. Thank you for your support.